Hi, I'm Sandra Younger from the United States, and what I bring to you, jewelry makers and jewelry makers at home, is the Knotty Do It All. What it is, is a cord knotting tool that helps you quickly and easily master like knotting, macrame, braiding. I mean, you can combine everything to make some really amazing and cool jewelry with cord. So I'm here in San Diego, and in case you don't know where San Diego, California is, here is a little map. So our boards came all the way from San Diego all the way to you guys in the UK. So I really hope you have enjoyed this amazing International Beading Week and I'm so happy that I got to be a part of it, especially on this last day. So you guys have fun and I hope you enjoy this tool. Ooh, this one is so exciting. The first thing I'm gonna show you is the moose knot. Look, what a beautiful, beautiful knot this is. And What's nice, it's super easy to make. And what I'm gonna show you is how you can uh, use a moose knot to tie a pendant on, and how you also use the moose knots to uh, tie on like a clasp and a ring at the end. And see, and the neat thing about this is you don't need any kind of hardware. Cause you know, like sometimes when you have like a necklace, you need to put some kind of like a, a I don't know, some kind of connector so that you can put a clasp on it. and. You know, so with this technique, you don't need any of that. The only thing you need is maybe the clasp, but you don't have to add anything else to the cord. So look how pretty that is. All right. So the way you make that, what it's really nice and easy. You put a pin and a clip um, an inch apart on your board. I guess that would be about uh, one and a half centimeters. Okay. So. What you do is you take your cord and your pendant and you offset the, what I like to do is, oh, here's a cool tip. See how this side of the knot is different from this side? So what I like to do is make sure that the back of the pendant is facing up and then I have the longer side uh, like uh, facing up as well. So what you do is you make your cord about Five inches if it's really thick cord, four inches if it's like like one millimeter. So I'm gonna measure um, five inches, which is about 12 and a half centimeters. So I have both facing up. Now I'm gonna clip this in just like that. And I'm gonna take one of my pegs and put both cords in back and then just start wrapping. And that's the why, that's why you need to make this side longer because since you're gonna be wrapping with it, it's gonna use up a lot of cord. So I'm gonna wrap three times. One, two, and three. And then you just hold it like this, nice and sturdy, and you take the peg out, and then you put the other, this end, you feed it into the, uh, like the little tunnel that you just made, and then you pull this through. Take it out and you tighten it down. Let's put that in here. Get it nice and even. And then you just uh, pull. Um, what, uh, you just pull one side. If it doesn't go down, you could pull the other. But see how by pu putting the, making sure that this back part was facing up, and then your longer cord facing up, the prettier side of the knot is facing forward. So and another thing you can do is you could like feed uh, beads in before you make the um, the moose knot so that you know you could add a bead so you have something that looks like this. So the next thing I'm gonna show you is how easy it is to evenly space the, because that's really hard. I mean, if you make a necklace and you make one side and then you need to have any kind of beads or not spaced evenly on the other side, it's like, it's like next to impossible. And I mean, if it is possible, it takes a lot of time. But this uh, way that I'm gonna show you is like really fast and easy. So what you do is you string on your beads. And for this, I'm using, just in case you're wondering, I'm using a two millimeter cotton cord. And the I used maybe like 50 inches of cord total. Because when you're using really thick cord, it takes up, uh, you know, one knot takes up a lot of cord. So what I do is I just uh, clip the, oh, and see this one, you could tell that I made it the wrong way. I wasn't paying attention, I guess. So the, this part of the, this side of the knot, I usually would want on the other side. Anyway, if 
but it still looks pretty. So what I do is I clip the knot just to hold this. So when I do the, uh, the overhand uh, knots, make them evenly spaced, check this out, it's super cool. So you make a knot on one side, and then you make a knot on the other side, just like that. And then at the, um, at the same time, see you have those like that? Just put them together and then take one of your pegs and just, uh, just uh, move that knot down, the knots down to where you want them. And see, and since you're moving them down at the same time, they're gonna be evenly spaced. See that? So you just tighten them and then you take that out and you snug them down. And then you put uh, one of your beads down on each side. And you could either like, I mean for this, for the, uh, the one that tightens them down, you could either do them both at the same time if you want or you could just do them separate. So here I'll do them separate. So I'm gonna do that one and then I'm gonna do this one. But you could do them um, at the same time if you want. So now we're going to do the, the next uh, set of spaced knots. So you just make an overhand knot here, an overhand knot there, and boom. Tighten them down at the same time. And one thing, um, if you notice, see the, see the knots? They're both facing the same direction. That's because when I made them, I made them the same. But uh, if you want them to be like outward, just make sure, and I'll, I'll show you what to do. So, so see how they they look like twins. So, if what you want to do, if you want to mirror images of each other, what you do is just make one this way, and then you have to I don't know, like bend it that way, just opposite of what you did here, and pull this through, and then uh, tighten. I mean, some people, it matters to some people. To some people, it doesn't. It doesn't matter to me. But just in case you're wondering, so see how they, they just look a little bit different. So, and then we're going to do the last one. And you can make these, you know, as long or as short as you want. So let's, okay, let's get that one. Okay, and get them even, take this off, and then put your last bead. And then what I'm also going to show you is um, how to um, use the moose knot again, but you're going to change it up a little bit to add your clasp and your ring at the, uh, the end of your cord. So, okay, so we're finished. So there you have it. You've got your, your pendant with your evenly spaced beads. And now um, I'm gonna show you how to use the same moose knot, but you're gonna change it just a tiny bit to get uh, your clasp and your ring on. So that's it, this is, this is great. I love doing this. So, uh, what you do is you're going to basically do the same thing. You take your a pin and a clip, you put it about um, an inch, which is about, I guess, I don't know, something like, I don't know centimeters, two centimeters, two and a half centimeters. So, okay, so we get your ring right there. And then what you want to do is make sure and measure the same distance for both the, the, um, the, uh, clasp and the ring. So like let's say from the top of the knot, let's say you want this to be mm, like let's say seven centimeters on, I mean 18 centimeters on each side. Yeah, that sounds good for a short necklace but if you want something longer just make sure that whatever you, however you, whatever side uh, distance you pick it, you do it the same for both. So right now let's, let's pick, let's pick eight. Uh, with eight inches, which is uh, about 20 centimeters. Okay, so we're gonna put our ring, let me get this off. Okay, 
let's go back from the top of the knot here. Ooh, we're 20 centimeters right there. Okay, so we mark it here, and then I'm gonna put my clasp on here and slide it down to where that mark is, right there. So now you come back, you clip this in. Now you're gonna make that same knot. So let's go one, two, and you take your peg out, put this through like this, tighten, and then you, you could put glue on it if you want, but you know, some materials you don't need glue. But the trick to the glue is you look at it, see that? And the part that like slides, that when you pull this cord, the side that like, uh-oh, why is it not going? Hang on. See that part that's going into the knot? So you want to put a little drop of glue right in there and then, you know, tighten it just like that. And so that's basically it. So you just trim uh, this part and you do the same thing to the other side. And so you end up with a necklace that looks like this. And, um, and another thing, let me show you. So with the, with the moose knot, what I did on this bracelet, see I did little teeny weeny moose knots. So you could take a small like charm or bracelet or pendant and make a, a bracelet like this. All right, the next thing I'm gonna show is the multi-strand. Okay, this is the multi-strand and this is, oh, this is so exciting. This is probably one of my favorite um, techniques that you can do with the board because let me, let me tell you everything. Okay, it's basically what you're doing is like you're wrapping your cord around the, the pegs on the board. Because normally like if you made like a multi-strand like this, you need that hardware that you have to like, you know, you get to put on the ends and it becomes like a nightmare because for every thickness of cord and for every like number of times you wrap, then you're going to need a bigger set of hardware. But with this technique, you don't need any hardware. So it makes it a lot easier just to make anything. So all see how this looks like a three strand. Well, it's not, it's actually just one continuous piece. I mean, these two, the, the knots are separate, but the part in the middle, it looks like, you know, three separate strands, but it's not. So that's really cool. So some of the things you can do, you can, oh my goodness, um, like this bracelet. What I did was I added, you know, beads and knots uh, to it, you know, uh, some wire wrap beads. So that's uh, one thing you can do. And then this one here, you can make a long wrap and then, uh, you know, you wrap it and you just, you know, wear, you know, like a wrap bracelet. And, oh, another thing you can take, like let's say you have scraps of leather left over and you don't know what to do with them. So one thing you can do is you can just make a multi-strand like this and then macrame right over it. And see, one nice thing that uh, this multi-strand does is it gives you these uh, closed loops on the end. So this you could use as a component piece for, you know, a bracelet, a necklace, you know, you know, whatever you want to use it for. Ooh, let's see what else. Oh, you can, uh, like this uh, necklace here, what I did was I made a multi-strand, but this one is short, so it's more of a component piece. So instead of like making a necklace that's like all beaded, and you know, right now the price of beads is really going up, so this is a good way to, you know, it doesn't uh, take away from the aesthetic, but it does save you money because you don't have to, you know, uh, use uh, beads for the entire necklace. And it, plus, it, it, I think it really adds to it. It looks really, really nice. And in this example, I just made, uh, you know, a, just a, a plain leather necklace and I just uh, uh, put a, a big pendant on there. And so you can uh, wrap, you know, like five, six, seven, as many times as, you know, you want, it, especially if you're using a clasp, you want to make sure that the, the hole here is big enough to, you know, for all the leather to fit through. Ooh, let's see what else. Oh, these guys, ooh, these are really pretty. This is very interesting because one of the cool things you can do with the board is you can make tassels. So what I did here was I made uh, these uh, tassel earrings. So I wrapped, you know, the cord around, I finished the ends and then I cut it in the middle. So I ended up with, you know, two, you know, basically tassels and then I, you know, went in and just put a bunch of beads. And I do have a tutorial for this on my website. So when you go, um, and you log into the lesson page, 
I have like the patterns for these uh, available and you know just uh, the, the basic directions and you know how to make um, ear wire. So look how pretty those are. So let me show you how easy and cool it is. And I'm, one thing, I'm going to make two things. I'm going to make a, a bracelet and then I'm going to make a, a tassel so you can see how they're made. What I have here is a multi-strand that I made and I'm, see how it's just all one, one continuous piece. And what I did, this is very interesting, so I, on this part I strung on some beads and then I knotted them but I, had, I made sure that, you know, it, that it would fit in between the pegs with a little gap here because you need space for your knots. So then I came around, yeah, I put on my class, slid it on, and then I came back in and just, you know, knotted. And then for this part, you know, I just got, uh, you know, I extended this out, you know, see how that can hold it? So what I did here was I just came back and I like macrame. So, so since this is raised, it's really easy to do like macrame and, you know, moose knot, it, everything. It's just, so you have that nice space and plus you have a lot of tension. You know, so it's kind of, it's not like you, when you're working on a clipboard, everything is like, like, like on the board and got to like pick the cord up and, you know, you know, slide it through. But this, with this, you know, it's, it was just real easy. I just brought it out, macrame, and now I'm going to put it back. So let's put this back over here. So I'm going to put my uh, clasp on the end there and then make sure my ring is like, behind like the post like that. So the knot that I'm going to show you is called the coil knot. So let's get some string. So for the coil knot you need a, probably about maybe, eh, um, let's see how much, probably about 13 centimeters of cord. And then you take one of your pegs And you just, you hold it like, like this, and then you just wrap. So there's one, two, and three. So you just hold it like that, and then you take uh, your peg out, and then you feed, uh, you put one side in, and then you put the other uh, side in. So basically what you're doing is you're wrapping, and then you're, you're going to pull these uh, together to uh, tighten. So one thing I like to do, I, I like this glue. It's called, it's clear Gorilla Glue, and I usually have like a knotting awl in there. So I'd like to get the, you know, some glue like this and just uh, put some right in there. And then what you do is you tighten your knot right over the glue. And then you do the same thing on this side. So let's go ahead and do that so you can see let me do this again. So you take your cord, and you take a peg, and then you wrap it. Ooh, this is so much fun. Oh, I just love making knots. Ooh. You know, and the nice thing about this board, everything's so fast and easy. I mean, so I know that there are some things that take a lot of time, but if you want something that looks nice and you don't want to, like, spend, like, two weeks making it, then this is definitely the way to go. What happened? Okay, there it goes. Okay, now it, it's kind of, it's a I haven't tightened it yet. I'm going to get some glue on my needle, like that. No, no, like... Like put it right in there and just like kind of like, like make sure it's like really well in and then you just take this off and you trim all the the loose ends of oh, this is this is a really pretty bracelet so you trim what I like to do is like trim really close but I, I should be doing that. So just trim nice and close. And you know, with this technique, you can use like any kind of cord. You could use leather, um, 
Oh, so let me trim these in since they're already dry. See, because with this glue, it uh, it's waterproof, it dries waterproof, and it's just nice and strong, and you know it doesn't have it doesn't have a bunch of fumes either. So, so there. Ta-ta! How pretty is that? Super fast and easy. This is the multi strand, and let me show you the other cool thing you can do with the multi strand, which are the the tassels. So, the the trick. If you're, especially if you're making a big tassel, I mean, you can, um, the, so what I do, let me show you. So on this one, what I did was, this is silk, and what I did was I just wrapped and wrapped and wrapped because I like my tassels to be, like, you know, substantial. So the, the way to measure, you're like, well, how do I know if I've wrapped enough times? So what I do, th there's a couple of ways. If, um, so you could like you could either squeeze it like and then put the tassel underneath and see if there's like the, the if the gaps on the side are too big, or if you want it to be really 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 tight, you can um, wrap a piece of cord around here, and then you could take a device, one of these uh, calipers, and you can measure the the thickness and see how it compares to the thickness of your tassel. So. The this one here, it, I, I have it to where it's not overly tight, but you know it's, you know it's it, it's snug. And one thing you can do if you have, especially if you have the big board, see how I wrapped, you know I wrapped. Uh, this is um, I don't know, this is maybe six centimeters. But if you made it really long, you could actually just make two tassels at the same time. Because if you if I finish it here, let's say I put my tassel cap in here and put another one in here. I could just cut it in the middle and just have two tassels. So, but for this video, I'm only making one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some thread, and now that I've made uh, you know my uh, wraps for my tassel, I'm going to feed the cord in like this. See that? And I've already fed like a cord in here just to help. This is just to help pull these through. So I basically I made a loop right here. So I'm going to feed this in like that, and then I'm just going to pull this through just because it, it just makes it easier. And now for the fun part. So what you do is make sure everything's nice and snug. Put your finger here, and then just pop it off. Let's go up and down. Okay, and then you just uh, slide it on like that. And then uh, one thing you can do is you could put glue in there. Like, uh, so I would tend to put like that kind of glue, the one that I just showed you, just dab some around the edge. Or if you want to uh, make a knot around here really tight before you uh, slip it into the uh, tassel cap, you can do that as well. And then what I do after I make the tassel, I just come in and I cut the bottom, just, you know, and if you say, uh, if you think, oh my goodness, you know, the, the tassel is like completely, um, you know, it, it's not straight. So one thing that you can do that I do is I, I use a clothes steamer to help, you know, I just straighten it out and just like steam it with a clothes steamer and it comes out perfect. So, so there, that's um, one of, this is the tassel is one of the other things you can do with the, with the multi-strand. The next technique I want to show you, oh my gosh, is one of my favorites because it's so fast. And knotting is very popular. I mean, people knot pearls, they knot beads, they make malas, they make bracelets. But you know what? A lot of people have such a hard time getting the knot close. And you know, I've never taken any classes in like any of this stuff. I just figured this stuff out myself. But the way that I do the knotting is super fast and it's easy. But you need to know a couple of things. First of all, let me show you how I do the knotting. See, normally, you know, you, you have like an awl or in tweezers, and then you make your knot, and then you slip it up. But the way I do it, you know, in some cases, you don't need any tools at all. Isn't that amazing? No tools. So all, all you got to do is uh, string your uh, beads on, and then just start knotting. But the trick is the only thing you need to do is find a way, because I do it backwards, see that? So I have all my beads strung on, 
And instead of like making the knot this way, what I do is, well, I do it that way, but then I bring the, the knot back towards me. So watch this. So here's my cord. Let's see if we can do this. So what I do is I make an overhand knot like that. Whoops. Let me get in here. It's hard to, because this takes up so much space when you're doing the knotting. So you just um, make your knot like right there and see you flip it over just like that and then you just tie the knot to uh, bring it towards you and then you take the the next bead and you just use it to like to tighten it down just like that see how easy that was okay in the situation where you will not need like a knotting all like this is if look at this cord see it doesn't have any twisting in it whereas like like s -Lon, does have twisting in it or you know a lot of times silk does so if you look at the cord closely and it has twisting you definitely want to use uh, a knotting awl and the reason is because the a lot of times i've i've tried doing uh the knotting without uh the awl in the every once in a while one of the knots will just twist up kind of weird so it's definitely important to use an awl when you're um, using a, a twisted cord. And it's not that much harder at all. So let me, let me do this a few more times. So you have your beads right here. You just grab the cord, you make an overhand knot, and then you uh, pull it through and you slide the knot towards you and then tighten. Amazing, okay, let's do that again. So I can literally, and this is no joke, make a mala, 110 bead mala in like 10 minutes. See that? Super easy. And look, there's no gaps. You, you know, a lot of people say, oh, but what about the, the space? Are you gonna get gaps in there? Nope, no gaps. So let's do this again. Flip, you flip it like this. You bring it under and then you pull and not slide it just toward you, just like that, and then bring the next bead down and tighten. See, like this necklace, I did it with leather, so I didn't need to use the awl. This took me less, not including the, the tassel. The tassel was separate. But this took me less than 10 minutes. 10 minutes, that's incredible. So all these necklaces, I think of all the, the techniques, I can do like the knotting the, the fastest. Now, you need to look at this, this is crazy. Look at these teeny, weeny, itty bitty beads. They are so tiny. And look at the, the knots are perfect. And the reason this worked, you, when you're um, knotting with really, really tiny beads, uh, that's when you want to use uh, the awl, which I'll show you uh, next, how that works. So, the, um, so let, me show, let me do this one more time. So you have your cord, which I'm telling you, you just you could wrap it around a, a heavy book, or you could ask a good friend to hold it for you or tie it around a, you know, a, a cleat or anything, just something to get you know, tension on the, this end of the cord so you could just you know, start you know, like knotting just like that. Just slide it towards you, super fast. So I'm gonna show you the, um, how to do, the, do this with, um, so right now, ooh, check this out. You're gonna believe this. Unbelievable. Look at those knots. They're stacked. I mean, who can do a stacked knot? So um, when I do, like sometimes when I do these like teeny weeny itty bitty um, necklaces and bracelets, I like to put like three knots in between, but I don't like when I have gaps in between my knots. So let me um, get this set up so I can show you how this is done. Okay, so I got this set up, and I hope we could do this, because I know I don't have a lot of space going this way and this way to show you, so I'll try to be, do it very, so normally what I do, and I have a video on this, so it, you know, if this isn't enough time for you to absorb this, uh, there's a, a video on the Naughty Lessons that shows this. So you make your overhand knot, and you just, you, you just flip it just to where that, the top of the that teeny weeny knot is just like that. Then you hold it, put your all in, 
and then you just slide it towards you. And when, when, with cord and beads, this tiny, what I do is I just get my fingernail, and just put it like right at the top and then just tighten it, just real gently, and then use the next bead to tighten it down. So let's do that again. So, oh, I need more cord. Oh well. So I'm, I gotta flip it over like that, tuck that up, and then put the all in, and then slide it towards you. And then tighten. See, in something like this, I mean, honestly, it took me like, I don't know, 20 minutes to do all the knots, and they're perfect. See, there's no gaps or anything in, in between. So I do a lot, a lot of my necklaces this way. So this is one of the techniques I really was excited to share with you because it's, it makes knotting so fast. So you, it, you know, a lot of you guys that like malas and like the just pearl knotting and just always had trouble with it. Well, you're not going to have trouble anymore because this is definitely the way to go. And you know, your son, you're maybe asking, well, if you, if if it's if you don't need the naughty do it all for it, then what's the point? Well, because you can use knotted pieces to incorporate into other things that you do uh, use on the naughty do it all. So, like when I did the uh, that bracelet, this one, the uh, at the beginning, the the multi strand. That's how I knotted uh, these uh, beads here. I just strung them on and just like brought them like sli sl slid them towards me. And of course, since it wasn't a, a, a twisted cord, it's a cotton, uh, I didn't need to use the awl. So anyway, that is um, the basic information for the knotting. It's so easy. I mean, you just make a knot and then just bring it towards you. Remember, if the cord is twisted like this, you definitely need to use an awl. And if it's not twisted like the, the cottons or you know, maybe even something like this, then you don't need to use the needle at all. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video.